I thought it would just be useful to go through some common um, paediatric rashes in dermatology because quite often um, in finals um, you'll get a picture or you might get a description of a rash um, with a case like scenario and they'll just want you to work through it so like explain what the pathophysiology is um, and what the treatment is and what the management is etc etc so it's, it's worth um, I think this is a really valuable thing to go through all right, um, and this is going to be really interactive, so I'll get the chat up so I can see people's answers. All right. All right, so first picture. So this is a uh, face probably of a three year old. Um, this gold crusty rash has appeared um, all around their mouth. Does anyone know what this is likely to be? Yeah, brilliant, Imbatigo. All right, so this is a classic picture of um, Imbatigo. It's this gold crusty um, rash around the mouth, and this is caused by um, a Staph aureus infection. Um, they also may get some eryth erythematous um, macules, um, and that may progress onto some vesicles and bullets on the face, neck, and hands. Um, but this is your classical picture of um, in Vitigo. Um, it it's normally infants to young children that get it, like um, and it's very you're very unlikely to see it um, in kids uh, over the age of ten. Um, does anyone know the management or treatment for this? Yeah, yeah. So fusic acid. Yeah, and if you get brilliant, yes. And then if you get systemic signs, um, then fluvoxacillin, um, because it's an anaerobic um, uh, bacteria. So you want to be using an antibiotic that works on anaerobes. Brilliant, okay. All right, anyone got any ideas? Well, first of all, actually, should we describe this rash then? So what, how would you describe this rash? Yeah, yeah, I, yeah, macular papula. Yeah, I, I agree with that. Yeah, diffuse, widespread. Yeah, these are really good words. So if, if you've got a picture of like that on um, on finals, um, the mark scheme, you'd get, uh, say, so there was four marks, you might get a, a mark for saying macular, you might say get a mark for saying papula, you might get a mark for saying widespread. So it's just worth um, just spewing out as many derm dermatological terms as you can just to pick up those marks. Anyone got any ideas what this might be? So this is a macular papular rash. Um, no, not not coplic spots. Uh, yeah, so I can see what you're thinking of scarlet fever with the strawberry tongue. Um, and yeah, it's yeah. There we go. Someone's got it. Yeah, Kawasaki. So the, they were all really good answers. So obviously with scarlet fever, um, is uh, a strawberry tongue is a feature of scarlet fever. Um, but you don't tend to get a rash as prominent as this with scarlet fever. Um, like with this sort of rash and this sort of um, like really bright red strawberry tongue, um, you'd be starting to think more of Kawasaki's um, strawberry tongue is um, is quite a it, it is a feature of scarlet fever, but um, it's not as common. I'm trying to get my words up. Uh, to get a strawberry tongue in scarlet fever is um, quite unlikely. Like it, it's, it's quite a, I don't think a rare symptom, but it's not a common symptom. Um, so Kawasaki disease is, it's an autoimmune um, mediated disease. We don't really know why it occurs. Um, and it's a medium sized blood vessel vasculitis. So this rash is caused by um, vasculitis. Um, and you should start thinking um, that it's gonna be Kawasaki disease. Um, when you see a kid that's had a fever for greater than five days, all right? So um, it's, it's normally really high fever and it's normally persistent and nothing brings it down and it keeps on going um, past five days. You might get some conjunctivitis with it um, and you might get a seat on, on this picture around the lips. This is called fishing of the lips. So you, they sort of get like dry cracked lips um, and they'll get um, like quite a red and erythematous um, oral mucosa, so their mouth, inside the mouth, really red. 
Um, what we worry about with um, Kawasaki disease is that um, it can cause coronary artery aneurysms. And so um, every, anyone who um, is diagnosed with Kawasaki needs to be um, investigated with an echocardiogram um, and only the follow up six weeks later as well, just to make sure there isn't any damage to the coron coronary vas uh, vasculature. Um, you want to be doing stuff like ESR and CRP as well, just to check those inflammatory markers. Does anyone know the treatment for Kawasaki disease? Yeah, brilliant, aspirin. Yeah, so it's the one of the really rare times when you give um, children aspirin. Um, do we know why we worry about giving children aspirin? Yeah, brilliant, Rye syndrome. Perfect. The Rye syndrome is a really, really um, rare condition and it's a reaction to the aspirin. Um, I think it uh, only occurs in about one in a million children who take aspirin, but that is the reason why we don't give aspirin to anyone under um, 16. Um, and I think someone also mentioned, um, mentioned um, immunoglobulins as well. Yes, yeah, so we give a high dose IV immunoglobulins for Kawasaki disease as well. Brilliant. Okay. What is this? What is this presentation of? Yeah, so yeah, so I can see why you'd think um, some burns and burns. Um, so yeah, so some of some people have put it. Yes, yeah, so this is called scalded um, skin syndrome. So it looks very similar um, to burns. Yeah, uh, and it does look very similar to um, toxic epidermal necroplasis as well. Um, and we'll go through that in a in a in a bit. Um, so yeah, similar presentations to toxic epidermal necrolysis, but this um, this. Uh, is caused by um, a staphylococcus um, uh, toxin. So it's known as, um, it's called um, exfoliated um, toxins. Um, and these are like the, 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 the proteins, so the proteins secreted by the staph aureus um, bacteria. Um, and that hydrolyzes the dermosomes um, proteins in the skin. And that's what causes this like burnt um, sort of type of skin look like look. Um, now, if you were to rub your fingers or hands over that skin, the skin would just slough off. It, it would um, it would literally come off um, just underneath your hand. Um, really, really painful. Um, it typically affects children under three years old. Um, it happens idiopathically. People don't really know why it happens. Um, does anyone know the treatment for it? So it's, a, it's an aerobic bacteria. So what would we treat it with? Yeah, yeah, uh, fluids and flucloxacillin, perfect. Yeah, so flucloxacillin, IV flucloxacillin. All right, any questions on that? No. Nope. All right, so you might have just seen the answer. But these are these are quite um, typical presentations. I'm not going to go too much into these because this is your bread and butter dermatology that you need to know inside and out. Um, but what is the picture on the left? Yeah, eczema. Yeah, brilliant. So that's um, it's an erythematous dry rash on the Fletcher regions. Um, and there'll be a family history of A to P, so asthma or hay fever or something like that. Um, eczema is your bread and butter dermatology. Um, what's on the right? Yeah, brilliant. Uh, psoriasis. So psoriasis, uh, commonly, like, classically, it will be on the extensor region, so like on the elbows um, and on the knees. Um, and it'll be a scaly, dry rash. Um, and you... you uh, <laughs> I suggest making sure that you know your um, steroid reg regime for um, eczema and psoriasis, the very common questions to come up in finals, um, and just knowing um, like the different potencies of steroids um, and, how, and what sort of um, emollients to use as well. Um, but um, I'm not going to go too much into it because um, it's... It's, it's your, your bread and butter dermatology, so I think it's better to just go through some of the more niche cases that might uh, crop up um, and surprise you. 
All right. What is this? So how would how would we describe this rash? Yep, it's perfect. Someone's already got the diagnosis that it's eczema, hepaticum, brilliant. Yeah, and it's vesicular. Yeah, vesicular is a really good um, word for this um, rash. So it's a, it's a just, it's normally a diffuse, widespread vesicular rash. Um, oh, brilliant. Periorbital erythematous vesicles. Yeah. So, um, does anyone know the cause of um, eczema, hepaticum? It's, it's sort of in the name. Yeah. Brilliant HF, HSV, um, and you have to have had um, a history of active um, atopic um, eczema. Um, so it's a it's a it's a HSV um, co-infection with active atopic eczema. All right, um, and it normally happens in preschool pre preschool children, um, and it presents with a sore throat, pyrexia, um, and then visa cause or ulceration in the oral cavity and face. Um, and then you can get a secondary um, secondary bacterial infection, um, and that, that that may lead to impetigo or cellulitis. Now, does anyone know why I might have put up a picture of um, an eye? Right. So this is eczema pesticum with possible eye involvement. Do you know why that might be a problem? So she's probably got, um, to answer Michael's question, so she's probably got eczema elsewhere um, and it, it's just a, and it's happened to, the, it's the um, HSV activation that has just caused the widespread rash and, and the, the HSV is, it just causes a widespread rash. You don't necessarily have to have eczema around the eye or um, near the face. Yeah, exactly. So it can lead to um, periorbital slash orbital cellulitis, and yeah, and um, that is um, quite that can be quite serious. And it's one of the reasons. It's one of the, um, it can be one of the reasons why we have to give um, a kid a CT head just to make sure they're not going to um, like like Chris said, like an intracerebral infection. So we worry about um, HSV causing um, encephalitis, um, and that can be really really serious. So what's the management for um, eczema hepaticum? Yeah, good, good, IVA, I, IVA cyclovir. Um, um, or uh, to fair, uh, depending on um, the severity of um, the condition, um, sometimes you can get away with um, oral acyclovir as well. Um, but they wouldn't they won't mark you down for saying or i or iv if i clear it in the exam yeah treat the eczema as well hopefully they'd already be on a, on a treatment um for their eczema yeah and brilliant antibiotics for a secondary and um, bacterial infection so you, you you want to normally give um, systemic antibiotics um just to treat the secondary bacterial um infection brilliant so that's eczema abetica all right next rash so how would we describe this rash? Um, can then anyone give me a diagnosis? Yeah, brilliant. So this is um, erythema nodosum. How would we? How would you describe erythema nodosum? Yeah. So maybe maybe punched out lesions. Yeah. There is a little bit of erythema. Uh, erythema there as well. If you ran your finger over these lesions, do you think they'd be raised or flat? Yeah, brilliant. So someone, yeah, not nodules. So this, this is these these are subcutaneous nodules, and they're always that well they're classically located and um, pretibulate. So that's why it's called erythema nodosum, um, because the, these um, lesions normally are located on um, pretibulate. Now. There's lots of different answers for this, but can anyone give me some causes of erythema nodosum? Yeah, some inflammatory bowel disease and Crohn's. Brilliant. Any more? Yeah, malignancy, sarcoidosis. Oh, I haven't got batteries down, but I'm, it, it could do. <laughs> Yeah, so it, it's 
Yeah, pregnancy as well. Pregnancy is a really good. That's a good answer. Yeah, pregnancy can cause um, erythematosum. Um, on my list, I've got uh, streptococcal pharyngitis. Um, it, it can be caused idiopathically, so sometimes you never find a reason why. Um, sarcoidosis, primary TB. So tuberculosis is always um, a really good answer. And, and, and it allows you to say that one of the further managements would be um, a chest X-ray. Um, inflammatory bowel disease, yeah, really good answer. Um, that's a really common cause of erythromidosum. Um, and, and that would allow you in a question to say as well that you would then further management would be, you, you might do like fecal calprotectin or you might um, refer them to do um, a colonoscopy, et cetera, start investigating for um, inflammatory bowel disease. Um, and then erythromidosum can also just be caused by like, a simple drug reaction. Um, so stuff like um, ACE inhibitors, I'm sure can um, cause erythromidosum. Um, there's quite a few drugs that can cause it. Um, to treat with uh, the treatment for erythromyelodosum is normally treating um, the the cause, um, so the underlying disorder. So if it's inflammatory bowel disease, you start treating the inflammatory bowel disease. Um, if the cause is TB, you treat the TB. Um, and erythromyelodosum is normally self-limiting, so it normally goes away by itself after the um, treatment of the underlying disorder is is done. Okay. So how would you describe this rash? And anyone give me a diagnosis. So it's not urticaria. Um, so urticaria, um, you start seeing some fluid underneath this rash, but this looks quite flat. Yeah, maybe you could get away with calling it a discoid rash. Um, yeah, so target lesions. Target lesions is um, the word that I'm looking for. Um, yeah, brilliant. Erythema multiform. Yeah, so as soon as you start seeing target lesions, you need to be saying erythema multiform. You probably could get away with um, discoid lesions. Um, and yeah, the, you probably also could get away with patches as well. Yeah, so this is um, erythema multiform. Um, there are several causes of erythema multiform, but do you know what the most common cause is? Yeah, so my, mycoplasma pneumonia is a cause, but it's not the most common cause. Um, yeah, HSV, yeah, perfect. Yeah, celiac disease is also um, a cause as well. Um, so all, any autoimmune disease really can um, cause erythema multiform, but 90% of erythema multiform is caused by um, HSV. But yeah, really good answer. So mycoplasma pneumonia, that can also cause erythema multiform. Um, certain medications, so I think ibuprofen can cause erythema multiform and ACE inhibitors again. Um, autoimmune diseases um, and sarcoidosis. So, yeah, so you describe this as a target-like lesion on the skin, um, and it can progress to erosions of bullae, um, the and you can like involve, uh, which then can involve oral genitals or mucosal areas. Um, so, what is the management for erythema multiform? Any ideas? Yeah, I, uh, I like your thinking, but it's it's not going to be too dry. Um, this skin. Yeah. Um. So maybe I like if the HSV infection is severe enough. Um. Yeah. I I I, I think conservative management is probably um, a good answer. So, so it's it's um. We, right, uh, well, I'll start from the top. So if we've got um, mild disease, um, so if you saw this in the GP, um, you probably um, wouldn't need to admit to hospital if they haven't got any systemic features. So if they're fit and well, they haven't got like a, a, any signs of systemic fever, like um, systemic signs like a fever, or um, like if their robs are all okay, then you probably treat this um, at home. And the treatment for mild disease is a topical corticosteroid or an oral antihistamine. Um, if they've got really severe disease, um, then we, you want to start thinking of um, systemic um, steroids, so systemic glutocorticoids, um, so oral pregnisolone would um, um, be ideal. Uh, if they have got um, systemic features, then that's when you want to start um, admitting them to hospital. Um, if you ever see anyone with erythema multiform with um, ocular involvement, so they've got um, the rash around the eye, 
again, because it's a HSV infection, you want to refer them to an ophthalmologist immediately. That's it. It's a bit of an emergency just because you can get um, an hepatic infection like um, around them, like preorbital cellulitis, normal cellulitis um, caused by an hepatic infection. So yeah, multiple, everything will form any rash around the eye, refer to ophthalmologist. Other than that, um, you can um, treat at home with topical corticosteroids and if they've got systemic features, um, you want to maybe admit them to hospital and they'll be getting systemic um, glucocorticoids. Okay, describe the rash and give me a diagnosis. Yeah, so, uh, yeah, macular papula. Yeah, can anyone give me a diagnosis? It's not chicken pox. So chicken pox is a vesicular rash. There we go, yeah. Measles, brilliant. So you actually probably won't see this very often now because of the MMR um, vaccine, but there are random spurts of like infections um, going around. Um, so it's a macular papula rash that lasts for about six to eight days. Um, and it's associated with a fever, um, coryza, cough, um, and you might get a non-purulent um, conjunctivitis. So you might just get a, a bit of reddening around the eyes, but you won't get any pus or anything. Um, and then an iconic sign of measles is coplic spots, which are white little spots in the oral mucosa. Um, <clears throat> it normally occurs in young children, um, and it, can, it, it normally peaks around late winter slash spring if it's going to happen. Um, it's supportive treatment, um, but you can give antibiotics just in case you think there's a secondary infection. All right. Um, this is a really common rash that might come from finals because they like to test you because they know that it's, it's a rash that you might not see very often because of the MMR vaccine. Um, all right. Any questions on measles? No. Yes, yeah, so you do notify public health. Measles, measles is a notifiable disease, and, and that and that's just because um, they, this, they they like to know where it's come from because we should have um, herd immunity. Um, so um, a lot of the time you find that um, uh, measles can be brought in um, from. I, I, th there's been quite a few cases of. Um, cases coming from Europe um, and just from cases um, happening in schools where uh, parents have decided not to um, vaccinate their kids. So yeah, that's why the public health wants to um, need to be notified just so they know they can track where the cases have come from. All right, so this, this is a bit of a um, tricky rash. Um, it looks very similar to measles. Um, so, um, is, again, this is a macular papula rash, but I'll give you a bit of a case history. So this person's had uh, a fever, they've been quite fatigued, they've had a sore throat, um, and they've noticed some quite a few raised lymph nodes. Yeah, so, so I, I like I like your thinking. Um, it, it could be. Um, but think of the think of the raised lymph nodes. So, so they've gone to a GP. They've had these raised lymph nodes. There we go. Someone's got it. Yeah, raised lymph nodes, and um, the GP has given them some antibiotics, um, and then they've sprouted this rash. So this is a glandular fever um, or infectious mononucleosis rash that's been given um, penicillin. So this is why you don't want to give um, antibiotics if you suspect. Um, glandular, well, you shouldn't be giving antibiotics if you expect glandular fever anyway, because it's a virus. But um, if this is um, a really classical symptom of um, uh, glandular fever, that they've gone to the GP, they've um, been unwell, the GP's given them antibiotics, and they've sprouted this rash. And so this is a really classical rash. Yeah, that's a bit of a tricky one, but I think it's just useful to have in the back of your mind. All right. Quick fire, anyone uh, spot the diagnosis? Uh, 
Yeah, brilliant. Yeah, so that's a, it's a pretty straightforward one. Um, does anyone know the causes of um, hand, foot and mouth disease? Yeah, brilliant. I'm not going to try and pronounce it. Um, yeah, so it's, yeah, so that virus, um, and it's the A16 um, type, and then it can also be caused by anterior virus A71. Um, but I think you're doing well if you remember those numbers in your finals. Um, so how would you describe this rash? What, what are these on the hands? Yeah, visa, yeah, brilliant. So they're vesicles. So you're going to get a macular or a macular papular rash. Yeah, you can also get, yeah, you can get some arithmetic blisters as well. Um, so yeah, so you might, you can get oral involvement first. So oral, you get some oral vesicles um, and they can rupture and they form uh, ulcers on the tongue and on like the buccal mucosa as well. And then you can get macular um, or macular papular um, a rash or a vesicle um, like arithmetic, arithmetic rash on the hands and the feet. Um, you can also get um, rash on the uh, buttocks, legs and arms as well. Um, manage, management for this is just supportive. Um, so um, this can be, um, you can just reassure the parents um, as long as there's no systemic features. So again, like, and they haven't got a really high fever or they've got any like respiratory distress, um, et cetera, um, they can go home. It can be treated conservatively. All right, spot the diagnosis. Yeah, that, that was quick. <laughs> that was really quick. Um, yeah. Brilliant. So yes, yeah, so this is slap cheek um, or erythema infectiosum or fifth disease. Um, it's caused by paravirus B19. Brilliant. Um, so you get a fever, coryza, headache, nausea and vomiting. Um, and then after, after those symptoms, about two to five days later, after those symptoms have appeared, you'll get this um, rash on the cheeks classically. Um, and then you can get like uh, you know, like an aerotherm just rash on the trunks and the extremities um, below but there is normally the cheeks first and then the extremities afterwards um, it normally happens um, in uh, at school age um, and it, it's supportive treatment again it's self-limiting um, but is there any warnings we should give to um, parents with if the child is being diagnosed with um, slap cheek disease is there anything that you should warm parents about yeah brilliant stay away from pregos brilliant so um if uh the fetus is um exposed to um parvo parvovirus b19 it can result um, in miscarriage um or um non-immune high drops fetalis which is basically um uh cardiac um heart failure of the fetus so the the, the fetus um starts getting dilated and um, cardiomyopathy and uh, um, the circulation of the fetus is um, poor and they start um, developing basically signs of heart failure in, in the mother's womb. Um, so it's not a very um, nice condition. This should be an easy one. So spot the diagnosis. So chicken pox, varicella zoster. Um, so how would you describe a chicken pox rash? Yeah, yeah. So it's, it's a very, it's classically a vesicular, vesicular rash. You may get some uh, a bit of macular papular, but it's most likely um, vesicles. Um, and you are um, contagious. So chicken pox is highly contagious. Um, and you're contagious until the, um, all the vesicles have crusted over. Um, so once they've crusted over, the kids can go back to school. Um, so it starts classically on the head um, and, the, and then the trunk and it spreads throughout the body. 
um, and you, you typically get small red macules, then papules, then pustules, and then crusting. Um, occurs between one, um, the ages of one and six, and it peaks um, in the winter and spring. Um, and you, can, you typically get a headache, uh, don't, don't feel like eating, um, right? earthy signs of a sore throat, um, cough, fever, itching. Um, you can treat it uh, with antihistamines. Um, if it's really severe, you can give acyclovir. Um, and you can actually give um, varicella, varicella zoster um, immunoglobulins um, for, uh, as a prophylaxis for people who are high risk. So that, that's you, immunocompromised um, individuals or people who, um, children who may be having treatment for um, leukemia and um, stuff like that. Um, definitely don't give aspirin because of um, what we've talked about, like Rye syndrome. Um, and NSAIDs are contraindicated as well because they can increase the risk of um, uh, skin infection. So you don't want to give ibuprofen um, to children with uh, chickenpox. Anyone have any ideas what this might be? So mum has brought in this baby uh, and the baby has been itching these um, small arithmetic um, papules um, and there's a bit of crossing going on in between the fingers as well. Um, and mum says, yeah, yeah, there you go. And mum says that the rest of the family has been suffering from them as well. Yeah, so brilliant scabies. So this is um, a scabies rash. So you might get a picture like this or you might get a picture of a hand where you see crossing in between the fingers. Um, does anyone know the treatment for scabies? Yeah, brilliant. Um, so yeah, so it's, um, you basically have to cover them head to toe in permethrin cream. Um, and then they have to wash it off um, after about eight to 14 hours. Um, um, but they have to get rid of their sheets. They have to get rid of um, the towels, everything, everything in the house has to be washed. Yeah, and the family need the same treatment as well. So everyone in that household, even if they're not family members, everyone in the household has to have the same treatment. Um, it's really, uh, it, it spreads like wildfire, scabies. All right, I think we've got a couple more rashes left. So how would you describe this rash? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's a discoid, discoid circular. Um, uh, not, not a carbuncle, uh, just because uh, it, there is some hair follicles around it. I don't think it's not the hair follicles that are inflamed that are causing the rash. Um, so this, this would be, possibly be quite scaly. Um, uh, does anyone have any idea what this might be? Yeah, so someone's put Tine. So this is um, Tine cor corporis. It's a ringworm. This is a ringworm. So dis discoid eczema. They normally give a picture of um, several several discs. Whereas this more this is a classic picture of um, ringworm. Uh, so ringworm is a, a fungal infection. It can caused by several different types of fungus. Um, so it's just topical um, application of antifungals um, and then systemic uh, treatment. You, you try to avoid using systemic antifungals because they've got lots of side effects and they can interact with lots of different medications. Um, but systemic therapy is indicated when uh, the topical therapy has failed. And then on the same lines, does anyone know what this is? Yeah, yeah, brilliant. So um, it's exactly the same. Um, uh, so this is this is a dermatophyte infection of the scalp, um, and it causes scaly lesions and it can cause like patches um, in the hair. Um, and this is treated um, systemically. So this is um, with uh, oral um, antifungals. 
This is a really common exam question. Anyone know what this is? Yeah, Maloska's contagiosum, brilliant. So this is really contagious. You'll find that siblings also get it as well. Um, it's caused by the pox virus. Um, so it's normally, um, you get these um, uh, papules that have got like, um, they're, 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 they're described as being um, umbilicated. So that they've got like little um, indentations in the papule. Um, they're, they're normally painless. Um, they, can, they can be sometimes itchy. Um, but we they, they tend they tend not to be treated. Um, they can last up to about eighteen months. Um, but you just reassure the parents that they don't need to be treated. Um, there's only a couple of occasions where they will be treated. So if they're on like um, I say if they're on the neck and they're going to rub on clothing, or they're on the eyelid or something um, that could cause a bit a uh, bit of irritation, then they'll um, freeze them off. Um, but normally they'll just leave them. And then. I think this might be the last second to last one. So what's this rash? Everyone should answer this one. Yeah, so ninja cockle septicemia. It, it could I, I can see what you what you think of HSP, um, but just because um it's so diffuse um and so dark um uh and and I mean HSP can look very similar to meningococcal septicemia, but um, to be fair, with this rash, um, you'd know it would be meningococcal septicemia because the, the kid would just look absolutely awful. Um, so if you see um, this rash in any child, um, if any non-blanching rash in a child, um, you just have to assume that they've got meningococcal septicemia. Um, and so it'll be um, admitted to hospital, um, they'll get IV um, keftrioxone and they'll get IV fluids. Um, to be honest, the, this rash, the, the meningococcal septicemia rash, is a fairly late sign um, that you'll normally um, they'll normally already presented um, before this rash has appeared. Um, uh, a worrying statistic with uh, meningococcal septicemia is that um, I think 50% of children who die of meningococcal septicemia have seen a healthcare professional within the past 24 hours. So they might come into ANU, they might come to the GP and they might just be a bit under the weather. Um, and their OBS might be a little bit raised, so the respirate might be a little bit raised, but you, they otherwise look fine. And then eight hours later, they might present to the ANU department with this rash and be really unwell. So it's just something to bear in mind. Um, meningococcal septicemia, 20 to 30% of the meningococcal meningococcal septicemia progress to um, meningitis um, and then other complications of um, meningococcal septicemia is um, pneumonia and obviously sepsis so that's just a really important one that they, they love to bring that up in finals I think this is the last one so anyone know what this is Yeah, yeah, brilliant. So toxic epidermal necrolysis or um, Stephen Johnson syndrome. So this is um, a dermatological emergency. Um, they can lose um, a lot of fluid. So this is basically, basically treated like a burn um, and the skin is literally just coming off. So this is, um, uh, this can be caused by Drugs so it can be caused by penicillin, ibuprofen, and um, quite a few drugs can cause it. It can cause by chemical burns. Um, it can be caused by um, certain types of infection or just generally systemic illness. Um, and you just get wide, widespread blisters, bullet, um, and macular hemorrhagic skin. Um, and they can have, they tend to get um, mucosal involvement as well, so erosions um, on the mucosal membrane. Um, and similar with um, Scalded, sins, scalded skin syndrome, they get, um, basically, if you run your hand over the skin, the skin would just rub off, it would just slough off. Um, and I forgot to mention that that's called um, Nikolovsky sign. I'll, I'll type it just so you can. Um, uh, there you go. So, uh, and that's the sign where it, it I think it's described as if um, if you put a pencil razor on the skin and spun the pencil, the skin would um, come off um, onto the end of the pencil. Um, 
so the management for Stephen Johnson syndrome is supportive. So it's hydration and maintaining um, their airway because you can get um, airway compromise with it. Um, you need to identify what's caused um, caused it. So if, if it's a medication, you stop the medication. If it's an um, infection, you treat the infection. If it's a chemical burn, you, you, you remove the chemical. Um, and you just treat it like a burn. So you just apply lots and lots and lots of emollient. Um, but I think it's got a very high um, fatality rate. Um, you can be really unwell with this. That was a lot of, um, there was a lot of different pictures. I have got a quiz to round off, but feel free to, um, if you want to finish, that's fine. Don't worry, I, that, I know it's a lot of information. So if you want to join, all right. So seven questions. So what virus causes this dermatology, dermatology emergency? Yeah, brilliant. So yeah, so it's HSV, um, herpes simplex virus. Um, type one and type two can cause it. Um, and uh, yeah, that's not very good picture but you can see that it's just quite diffuse and vesicular involvement again on the face so what is the cause of this rash Yeah, yeah, so majority got you that. Uh, so it's the exfoliated toxin of um, staphylococcal um, bacteria, so staph aureus. Perfect. Yeah, so which, which is a parvovirus B19 rash? Yeah, so um, parvovirus B19, it's slap cheek. Um, and as you can see, there's um, arithmetic um, like on the cheeks of this, of this child. Um, I think, uh, I can't show the other fish, but um, this one, that's Kawasaki's, that one's measles, and this one was uh, Staph aureus infection, so Imbertigo. So what causes this sign? Yeah, brilliant. So these are coplic spots. Um, so these are the white little spots that you see in the oral mucosa and that's the sign of measles. <laughs> Carabaskin's doing well. Yeah, sorry, I, I was a bit mean with that. I, I target lesions is also meant to be right as well. So yeah, this is this is erythema multiform. Um, sorry about that. Um, so yeah, it's around lesions with um, but not affected in the centre of the lesions. Um, so yes, they're target lesions. Um, erythema, and as soon as you see target lesions, it's erythema multiform. Yeah, brilliant. So um, tinea capitis is um, basically a fungal infection on the scalp. Uh, tinea uh, 
versus colour is um, you basically get um, depigmentation de of the skin due to a, a fungal infection. And tinea pedis is athlete spots. So, yes, yeah, so this is ringworm on the skin. Um, so this is tinea corporis. Last question. So what is the gold standard, treat, gold standard treatment for this rash? Yeah, perfect. So this is uh, Molluscum contagiosum. Doesn't require treatment unless it's um, bothersome. So um, if it's on the eyelid, etc., um, then it's cryotherapy, but it shouldn't be treated routinely. There we go. Who would have, who would have thought Carol Baskin was also a dermatology expert as well? All right. So that that's the end. Um, before you go, I'm just gonna post. So uh, I'd really appreciate it if you could just fill in the survey monkey that I've just posted in the chat, um, just so I can um, improve like um, the teaching that I'm doing. Um, and this is anything that you want me to cover. I hope it was useful. Um, and I'll uh, I'll put the slides on the OneDrive as well. Um, I think next week we've got um, got John. John's going to cover um, renal uh, tubular disorders, and Wednesday Vicky's going to go over some uh, palliative care, and Thursday um, Olivia's going to go over some cardiac emergencies. So there's three teachings next week, but I'll put all the details on on the Facebook tomorrow.